Have you ever wanted to work with a twin needle or double needle on your Stinger sewing machine? I'm gonna show you just the basic tips and tricks for threading and using a twin needle on the Stinger Elite ME457. Plus we have done a ton of videos on this machine so you can find those links and kind of go back to the beginning, start watching them and you'll learn everything you need to know about your Stinger sewing machine. Now this is probably one thing people are a little apprehensive about, but with knowing a few things about how a machine works, this will make sure that you do not break your needle. So before we actually thread it up, let's talk about where you would use a twin needle in the first place. Have you ever heard of pin tucks? You can kind of see them pictured on this package here. We're going to do them with decorative stitches, always fun because you can put two different colors in and pretty much take your stitches from uh, okay to wow. So those are all fine. We've just been doing some stitches and talking about the reasons you wanna stitch them all out because they look 10 times better than what they look like pictured on your dial here. You can also use a twin needle to duplicate that hem on your t-shirts or necklines that have two rows of stitching and on the back there's kind of a, an overlock-like stitch so you can simulate that with a twin needle. So the back is gonna be your bobbin thread and it's gonna zigzag back and forth. So it won't look identical, but it will have the stretch and the look of a cover stitch, which is what you see on commercially made garments. And you can simulate that. You will also find that twin needles come in different sizes, such as widths. This particular one is 2.0 millimeters, so they're very close together. If you're doing usually those hems, you're probably gonna look for a three or a four millimeter wide. And here's what you need to know. First off, when we start, we're gonna start with a straight stitch. Your stitch length, let's just keep it kind of around that two and a half to get started. But when you start to do a zigzag, what you need to do is look at your machine see the maximum stitch width, so mine is six, minus the size of twin needles, so this one's two. So I need to make sure my stitch width is no larger than four because the machine doesn't know that we're putting this on. So if we left it all the way at six, it's gonna go so far that the needle's gonna break when it comes over here and then it'll break the other one when it goes over there. So that's not good. So as long as you keep this in the three and a half or not more than four range, Make sure your needle's in the center needle position, so just watch that. And not all stitches, I'm gonna just say that because I haven't gone through and tried all stitches, but some of these stitches might feel like they start a little bit more to the left or to the right. So I'm just gonna say, just always test, and you can hand turn the stitch until you see a full uh, revolution of the stitch stitched out. You will know whether or not it is going to work. You just wanna make sure it stays within your stitch area. Next, I am gonna put a link below to a handheld needle threader. I, I usually talk about these when I do twin needles because on a regular soy machine with a needle threader, it is not going to work because it only thinks there's a center needle. Now the needles are like this. So I'm gonna show you how a handheld needle threader works. And I love to have a few of these around, especially if one year your needle threader decides not to work or it gets bent or broken, this is your backup. So it's actually fairly easy to use. So let's just start by switching the needles out. It still has a flat side on the back. So make sure you are getting it as high as it will possibly go. And then a nice little finger tighten. I'm gonna add a spool of pink. And with that, I'm gonna use a vertical spool pin just for today and use the thread up top here. All right, so I'm gonna just thread right on top of the other thread. You could take the first one off and then thread them together, but for today. But I am going to make sure that I give it kind of a little pull and tug to make sure it gets as deep into the tension discs as possible. Now here's how the needle threader works. It doesn't matter which thread goes in which needle, so just go ahead and pick one. I'm gonna lower the presser foot just to give myself a little bit more room, and I can show you this a little easier. First, the needle threaders all have a little notch or marking or an arrow on top. And if you flip it 180 degrees, you'll see one on the opposite side. So that just means that you need to always have one of the arrows on top for you to see. 
When I give this just a little plunge, and sometimes I feel like that's what it is, a little plunger, you can see a little tongue coming out. It's a very small piece of metal. And when we do this without thread in the needle threader, you're gonna slightly push onto the needle and that tongue is gonna sit in the groove. You can even feel it kind of stop. And as you slide down, what's gonna happen is it's gonna fall into the eye of the needle. You can kind of see the little tongue kind of plunged through it. So when you place your thread, you need to place your thread side to side. I always describe this to my students, like you're putting a bridle in a horse's mouth. So the thread goes side to side, start about halfway up, gently push in, so you feel the tongue stop in the groove of the needle and then just slide straight down until it falls in and leaves that little loop of thread. On this one, I have a little hook so I can just pull that through and one needle is threaded. We'll do that again. Arrows on top, thread goes side to side. Gently push in till the tongue stops. Plunge it all the way in and then pull it through. Like I said, I'll put some links below if you are interested in finding one of those and adding it to your sewing room. It is really, really nice. Okay, first things first, we are going to test. So on a straight stitch, I'm going back to a two and a half stitch length and zero width. I like to sometimes even hand turn the first couple of stitches, just make sure things are sounding correctly and I have everything threaded up. But once it's threaded, you are ready to go. So here's what we're gonna do. If you pick a zigzag, and again, bring your needles up as you pick different stitches. No wider on this one than four millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and hand turn one swing and a second swing, and now I can see that I'm clear to stitch. And that's what we're going to get when it comes to decorative stitches. It's kind of fun. Let's just turn this around. I'm going to pick a couple more stitches. Again, staying within that range here is a multiple point zigzag. I could shorten this a little bit if I want. But this will give you an idea of what is possible when you start stitching with a twin needle. So it's just that easy. Find two threads that you like, find a twin needle. Different widths will give you different looks, and I think you'll have a lot of fun if you follow these very important steps to make sure your needle doesn't break. Again, find all of our videos that we have done on this machine in the description below, and other links to feet, needles, and other items you might like to purchase to give your machine a little bit extra fun for you to play with.